Thank you for joining us. Just time for a quick recap of the week, and we begin in Greece, a country of and in ruins. Now, you may remember, Greece nearly went bankrupt a while ago after years of financial mismanagement, and the rest of Europe has had to angrily bail it out. Now, the terms of those loans were pretty harsh, and the new Greek government has been attempting to renegotiate them, and this Friday there was a breakthrough. Greece finally has the financial lifeline it desperately needed to avoid a disaster. Eurozone negotiators have agreed to a four-month extension plan of the country's $273 billion bailout program. Now that sounds pretty good, but in exchange, Greece did have to admit that moussaka is just disgusting potato lasagna. <laughs> Nobody wants it. Now, now, if you're wondering why Europe agreed to that deal, it's because they pretty much had to. If Greece collapses, it may take the whole European single currency down with it. A lot depends on Greece at the moment. So on Friday, their new finance minister tried to reassure people in the Greekest possible way. Sometimes, like Ulysses, you need to tie yourself on a mast in order to get to where you're going and to avoid the sirens. We intend to do this. OK, OK. That's not that reassuring for two reasons. First, everybody in Ulysses' crew dies in that story, <laughs> and Ithaca falls to absolute shit in his absence. But secondly, is that a popped collar? Because <laughs> if you are trying to get an entire continent to trust you, it's not a great idea to show up looking like Pitbull's uncle. <laughs> I have to say, for a guy overseeing an economy on the edge of Armageddon, he is pretty laid back. He was even cracking jokes in the press conference. Enough of this self-congratulation. This is time for work. I haven't finished, Paul. Be patient. It's a virtue. That is a cocky attitude. Your country's on the verge of bankruptcy and you're acting like a strip club manager giving a speech at his retirement party. <laughs> Enough of this self-congratulation. The polls are getting cold, ladies, so get back out there, Bambi. Clearly, he's a bit slimy. Here's the problem, though. The whole world's economy depends on this guy. And the, the more you find out about him, the scarier that seems. It's not his plan nor his left-wing rhetoric that has got tongues wagging in Europe. It's his informal style. In London this week, he unveiled an edgy look. More biker than finance minister. What are you wearing? <laughs> Dress for the economy you want, not the economy you have. Because, if I can just give you a quick, a quick bit of criticism here, you look like a 50-year-old molly dealer at a Greek discotheque. <laughs> How are we giving this man billions? I wouldn't give him $50. Because deep down, you know I would never see that money again. Because that is the face of a man who would immediately spend it all on scented lube. That's a fact. <laughs> but let's move on. Let's move on to Ukraine. Let's move on to Ukraine.